Hello and welcome to today's video. In this one, we'll talk about a suspended slab using the T-beam technology. To do that, we are at an active project. It's an upcoming bungalow. And in charge of this project is... Engineer Dave Karaoke from Cartridge Breakers Construction Limited. And I'm Nick Mema from Property Noma. So on the topic of suspended foundation. Yes. First of all, let's understand the term a suspended foundation. What does it entail? Uh, basically, when you talk about suspended foundation, you know, when you're doing the foundation of your house, there are various types of foundation. For example, there is a strip foundation that uh, people usually call it traditional. And then we have suspended foundation, we have raft foundation, we have pad foundation. Those are the types of foundation and are many others that we have in the construction industry. Now, when we talk about suspended foundation, this is a type of uh, foundation that you don't do mass excavation and uh, trenches. You just uh, do your column pits and you get to your ground level and uh, you do maybe your ground beam or uh, in this case you use whatever you use for your ground beam and you place your slab on top in that uh, you haven't done uh, mass excavation uh, beneath okay. that suspended foundation. Okay. And there's no back filling. Yeah. Yes. Now, uh, as an engineer, yes. what made you go for the suspended foundation as opposed to the strip foundation? Uh, for, for this, for this project, oh, yes. Yeah. Now, for this project, uh, we are in uh, past Nanyuki, almost to Timau, a place called uh, Madagiro. That's where the site is. And uh, as you can see, the, we are in a site that it is uh, mostly with uh, loamy soil mixed with black cotton soil. Now, when you look, when you know the conditions and the characteristics of black cotton soil, of course, you will it will uh, advise you on the type of foundation to take. Now, in this case, we found out when we came for site visit, we did uh, trial pits. Uh, once we did our uh, trial pits, we realized that uh, we are finding uh, the maram at uh, around uh, five to six feet. Now, based with the size of the house and having uh, known this is black cotton soil, you cannot do your trenches without excavating the whole of black cotton soil. So that means the whole of uh, six or five feet need to be done mass excavation. And uh, once you do mass excavation, also you love to do the backfilling. So what is the other ways or other solution that could use? So we opted for a suspended type of foundation in that uh, we do a 1.5 meter column from the ground. Then we, from the ground level, we go around with uh, maybe 500 or 600 meters to just level it. We get the level according to the ground profile. And once we attain that, you go directly to your ground beam and you start your slab. Now for us here, we use the, the T-beams and blocks yes. for the slabbing. Okay. Yes. Now, uh, you said that the soil is primarily black cotton soil. Yes, yes. And you had, the client had to excavate. If, if uh, the client had gone with the strip foundation, they had to uh, excavate the whole... The whole part of it. And then no, backfill. And with then the, backfill with again with hardcore and marrow. So, in this case, has she saved any money using this type of foundation? A lot, actually a lot of money, because okay. uh, this house is uh, 190 square meters. Right. And uh, if I've, as I've said, the depth is 1.5 meters. Yes. So if you do the volume, the volume of, uh, of, the, of, the, of the site now, it's around 283, 287 uh, cubic. And now if you want to calculate the, the number of tippers that uh, all lorries that uh, could be used to take out the, the black cotton soil, uh, it could be around uh, 29 lorries. That is 29 trucks to take out the black cotton. And exactly the same number of, uh, of uh, trucks will be used to do the back filling plus four for leveling. Yes. So if you are in Nanyuki and you know the cost of maram in an 18 ton truck, and uh, you compare with this one that we use, by the way, in this project we've used uh, T-beam, eh? yes. T-beam from uh, Kingdom Precast eh? and yeah. blocks. So now we've used the T-beam as the ground beam, and you have used also the T-beam as the layer for the layout of the slab. So and uh, the whole, the total number of uh, length uh, and linear meter for the slab was around uh, for the T-beam was 225, 225 uh, meters. meters. Uh -huh. And now per linear meter, if you visit Kingdom, you know the rates around a thousand to twelve hundred. Yeah. Pa, pa, pa linear meter. Pa linear meter. Uh -huh. So if you know that cost, and the blocks were around 1300 for this whole project. Yes. So and the per block is around 140. So if you check on the on the on the saving and or rather on the cost of the blo of the slab versus the cost of uh, the doing the open excavation and backfilling, of course you have a very huge saving. Yes. Not less than 500,000. Okay. Yes. If you could have done strip. 
Yeah. Yes. So this house is 190 square meters in size. Yes. Uh, what will it be? Is it a three bedroom, four bedroom? Because 190 is a big house. Yeah, yeah. It's a three bedroom. These are the drawings. It's a three bedroom bungalow, hidden roof, a hidden roof with a concrete gutter. Yes. And a master in suit. It also has a study. It has a spacious kitchen, spacious lounge. Uh, it will go close to the one we did in uh, Kisi. Okay. Yes, in terms of size. Yeah. Mm. Now, uh, you did the structural design for the slab. Yes, we did. So you, you, for a client who has a similar issue somewhere, they have uh, black cotton as their primary soil and, it's, and it goes very deep. You are the one who provides the, the assistance for for the design of the slab using this uh, suspended foundation? Yes, 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 that's very true because uh, first we need to do the site visit. Yes. Once we do the site visit, we do the trial pits. Once we see the levels of, uh, of uh, cotton or the depth, we'll be advised on which kind of uh, suspension we'll do. How many columns, for example, what kind of uh, reinforcement to use, what are the spans, column to column, what are the length for T-beam, what is the layout for the direction of the T-beams and blocks. Yes, yes we okay. do. And between T-beam and T-beam, what's the spacing for the blocks? So we use the block, this block is uh, 545 millimeters. 545 millimeters, so exactly that's the spacing. This has been done today, Yes. laying out the blocks. Yes. So does that mean it'll be done by, it'll, it'll be done in filling the blocks today? Uh, by evening, the whole uh, part of the slab will be done. Okay. Yes, uh, you'll get a picture of it, it will be done today. Then tomorrow, we are doing the top casting. All right. of the mass concrete for the slab. And uh, how will you handle plumbing in, in such a foundation now? Now, in such foundation, it's very easy. It's just like doing suspended foundation using a ground beam. Yes. Now, after you, you're already done with the whole slab, now, you are, from the structural drawing, you identify the positions of the wet areas and the, maybe the kitchen areas. So those are the points you're going to put your floor traps, your waste pipes. How do you do it? You just use a grinder, you drill the blocks, you place your pipes, you use some concrete to hold it, and then you're done. Okay, yes. so you'll pass through the blocks now? Yeah, yeah, we'll pass through the block downwards. Yes. Yes. Uh, is there a case where you'll use the hollow sections of the blocks? Is, uh, is it useful for you? For now, I can say no, but if it could have been the suspended foundation, yeah. we could have used it for electrical works. Okay, to do the slab, eh? yeah, the suspended, to do the conduit things and everything, it will be used, it could have been more useful there. Okay. Yes. Now another thing. Yes. I uh, remember the at the river project. Oh we yeah. Did the 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 flat beam mm -hmm, technology. Mm -hmm. Yes. Here we there's uh, we don't have props. Yes. Supporting. Yes. Why why is that the case now? Now in this case you uh, you have to uh, observe and realize we don't have a ground beam first. Yes. Now we've used the T beam to act as the ground beam first, and other T beams to act as the for the layout of the slab. Now, in this case, if we could have used uh, the flat beam, we will be forced to do the ground beam so that we interlock it with the flat beam. Yeah, yeah, yeah true. Now, but because we don't have the ground beam, we cannot use the flat beam. Yeah. And this is a bungalow. If we start use, doing the ground beam, we compare the cost of doing the ground beam, uh, RC ground beam, and, use, uh, and placing the T-beam or the flat beam on top, of course, using T-beam as, uh, as, the, as, the, as the beam saved a lot. In this case, the T beam being the, the the ground beam, yes, and it being a bungalow, yes. You are sure that this is a strong foundation for the client. Uh, what car as is an engineer now? Yes, I do. Uh -huh. Yes, I perfectly do. If you if you doubt the 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 the, the, the beams, eh? so I'll ask in the suspended slab, eh? why do you use it for spans of nine meters and uh, six meters without any support on beneath, and yeah. you're assured it's okay. Uh -huh. So this does basically it's a suspended slab. For the ground floor. Okay. Yeah. And also I've noticed that uh, there are some beams that are longer than the others, mm -hmm. some are short. Mm -hmm. Is it part of uh, the structural design? Exactly. So when we are doing the layout, after we do the column positionings, we, are, we, we have to do the layout of the, of the beams. We have to know like for what direct, the orientation of the T-beam, the placement of the T-beam, it gives <coughs> us different direction because we try to attain the shorter spans yeah. for maximum uh, strength. Okay. Yes. Okay. Now, tomorrow, tomorrow is, is casting day. Yeah. What's the level of concrete you're trying to achieve? Uh, in the depth? This, the depth will do around 75 mm. Okay. Yeah, 75 mm will be a level for, for, for the concrete. 
yeah. for the concrete topping. And we are not using BRC, we are using fiber mesh. So yeah. that's another part of saving. Yeah. Because in this house, we could have used uh, close to three rolls of BRC. But now we are using, we are, we are, we are using the fiber mesh. Which will be mixed with the concrete. We will mix with the concrete. Another case, you will never experience cold from beneath because there is no contact with the ground in this house. Yeah. So, uh, mambo ya baridi yapa, hakuna, imemalizika. Okay. Yeah. Mambo ya dudu, wa dudu, hakuna tena, imemalizika. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, because we have suspended it above the ground. Now we are standing on the ground level. Yes. We can see how high the, the foundation is, how yes. suspended it is from the ground. Yeah. Now, what uh, will you do, or what will the client do to cover this space now? Uh, just we'll use an infill wall okay. to cover here. Maybe we can use uh, the stones. We can use the stones. Then we do a wall here just for the purpose of preventing something to, from entering beneath or leaving. Yeah, uh, comfortably. Yeah, with the house. Yeah. So we'll just use uh, use a all round wall. We'll do an all all round wall uh, just to prevent uh, the anything from penetrating beneath the house. Uh, to get a proper illustration of the ground beam. Mm -hmm. Kindly tell us uh, what the ground beam is and the, sp the other spans, the other T-beams, what they are doing. Now basically, maybe here, uh, you'll see that this one, this T-beam acts as the ground beam. Yes. And now it, it goes all round from, uh, this is a support column, we have the column there, column here, we have this as the ground beam. Now we have, uh, we have other T-beams that are on top, and then we have on block. So these are the slab T-beam, this is the ground layout T-beam that help us to carry the top uh, beams or the slab. All right, so this is uh, part one of this house that is upcoming in Nanyuki. We've talked about the suspended foundation. At least uh, we've had a chance to learn from engineer Dave Kariuki uh, using his experience uh, in structural engineering and telling us how this slab uh, works and how it has helped this client save money uh, because our soil is black cotton soil. So stay tuned, uh, we'll uh, get more updates as the project continues and we'll see you in part two. Thanks for watching. Karibu sana, asante.